Over the years, the automakers have consolidated accessory drive components such as the alternator, the air conditioning compressor, the power steering pump, and the water pump onto one belt. On most late model vehicles, this is the serpentine belt. The serpentine belt, also known as the accessory belt, is part of a system known as the accessory belt drive system. In addition to the belt, this system usually includes an automatic belt tensioner that provides the tension to the system and minimizes the vibration that occurs in the belt drive as the engine runs. A decoupler pulley attached to the alternator also might be part of the system. In the late 2000s, automakers added a new type of belt to take some of the load off the main accessory belt drive. It's called a stretch fit belt or stretch belt. GM, for example, started using stretch belts to power the air conditioning compressor on some 2009 models with the LS V8 engine. So why stretch belts? Well, in addition to removing some of the load off the serpentine belt, stretch belts also allow for better packaging and solve NVH problems that can occur with a longer serpentine belt. Less belt means less tension and fewer noise and vibration problems. Also, stretch belts have a unique internal construction that allows them to function without the need for idler arms and tensioners. Eliminating the need for a tensioner allows automotive engineers to reduce the number of components that share the primary belt drive, reduce belt drive friction losses, save weight, and design more compact accessory drives. As you can see here, this stretch belt is a lot shorter than the serpentine belt. To avoid confusion between the two types of belts though, manufacturers will add identifiers to their part numbering to indicate that the belt is a stretch fit application. Some of the more common ones are E for elastic or S for stretch. On this Riv Ace Fit Belt from Bando, you can see here that the F identifies this belt as a stretch belt. Stretch belts can last 100,000 miles or more, but this can vary dramatically depending on the vehicle's environment and where it's mounted. That's why inspection is critical. You cannot simply go by mileage recommendations alone. When a stretch belt exceeds wear specifications, it's no longer able to effectively grip the pulleys and will start slipping. The primary cause of slipping is material being removed from the belt's grooves not belt stretching. Over time, small debris and the interaction with the pulleys will wear the shoulders and valleys of the grooves. When the grooves become too shallow, the pulleys bottom out. When this happens, the walls of the groove are no longer gripping the pulley. When inspecting a stretch belt, your customer always should measure the depths of the grooves with a belt gauge since the differences between a worn belt and a good belt can't be seen or felt. The new materials used to make a stretch belt don't crack before the grooves are worn. A few quick selling tips. First, always sell both belts together. Most serpentine belts wear at the same rate as stretch belts and have to be removed to service most stretch belts. And when you're selling a stretch belt, be sure to recommend a high quality belt such as this Rib Ace Fit Belt from Bando. Engineered to exceed OE specifications, the Rib Ace Fit Belt features a proprietary EPDM compounding for longer life, proprietary run quiet technology for better grip and less slip, resulting in quieter operation, and precise metric sizing and machine cut ribs for a more exact OE fit. Thanks for watching.